Our theme of this camp retreat is what? Awaken. Awaken. And the verse chosen is Romans 13, 11. So it's probably a good idea that we go there. So go to Romans chapter 13. And when you have it, stand up. Okay, sit down. <clears throat> now, the author of this letter is the Apostle Paul. And he's writing to Christians in Rome around 57 AD. And we're going to begin reading in verse 8. So we know what verses 11 to 14 are referring to in its context. And that's what we'll pull today's message from. And for my note takers, we'll have six points. So verse eight starts. Owe no one anything except to love each other. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. And any other commandment are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is fulfilling of the law. Now, here comes our verse. Besides this, you know the time that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. The night is far gone. The day is at hand. So then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provisions for the flesh to gratify its desires. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, come. Completely take over everything I say. That when I speak, they don't hear me, they hear you. Take these words and pierce their hearts. Encourage them. Uh, motivate them. Convict them. Sanctify them. Help us to see what it is you're teaching us here. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so let's just dive right in. Um, I don't have any catchy intros. I used them both up last night. So we're just going to go right to it. Um, but just to set the tone, let me remind everyone. Um, someday, any day, you will meet Jesus. It could happen. Hey, you're good. Any second. Any second it could happen. So let's see what Paul says about it. He says in verse 11, besides this, this meaning, besides what he just told us about loving people, as well as everything in chapter 12. So when you have time, read that. Besides all that stuff that I just told you, you know the time. The hour has come for you to wake from sleep, meaning exactly what he says. Wake up. That's our first point. I'll write it down the board. Wake up. Wake up. Christians, wake up. It's time. The time is now. This isn't sleep time. This isn't time to be lazy and slothful and just going through the motions. This isn't time to be a foolish virgin or a wicked servant. Wake up. This isn't time to be lukewarm and backslide. This isn't time to be fearful and ashamed. This isn't time to give into temptation and sin. Wake up. 
If you're one of those spiritually sleeping Christians, wake up. It's time to be active. It's time to be alive. It's time to be a Christian. You know the time. It's time to wake up and love people. Contextually, that's what he's saying. He's saying we should love people because love fulfills the law. And we should love people because we know the time. Time meaning that Jesus time. That time when we meet him. That time of salvation as he finishes in verse 11. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. Not the temporal salvation here on earth, but the eternal salvation in heaven. It's getting closer and closer each day that goes by. Like it's in our view. We can see it at any moment now. Jesus will take us at any moment. So wake up. Be ready. Be prepared. Be performing. Our lesson from last night. The final phase of our salvation being glorification will take place sooner than you think. So wake up. He continues on in verse 12. The night is far gone. Meaning this present life. This temporal life. This life we live here on earth in darkness and sin and imperfection, that's about to be over. The day is at hand, meaning the everlasting day of glory, the day where we'll be in uninterrupted communion with God, the day of light, joy, and comfort, the day of no more doubt, no more fear, no more pain, no more suffering, no more darkness, no more imperfection. That day is at hand. The day when you meet Jesus is at hand. The kingdom is at hand. So then what? Verse 12. So then, let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. I remember as a kid, I would come home from playing football, just American football. Um, completely covered in mud, like from head to toe, mud. I even had mud inside my socks. How does someone get mud inside their socks? So my mom would make me get undressed in the hallway so I wouldn't track mud up through the house. And if we were having guests over for lunch or dinner or whatever, I had to clean up quick. Like, there was no time to waste. That's the idea we get from this verse. Paul is saying the time is now. The day is at hand. You have no time to waste. We have a guest showing up, being Jesus. So cast off the works of darkness. Get rid of that evil, wicked, sinful mud in your life. Take off those dirty, muddy clothes and put on the armor of light. Now, my mom didn't have me put on armor. I mean, that would be weird, right? You show up to my house and I'm suited up like a medieval times guy. But Paul does tell us to put on armor. And this isn't the first time he tells us to do it. So our second point is arm up. Wake up, arm up. When Paul was writing this particular part of the letter to Romans, he had the same mindset when he was writing the first letter to the Thessalonians chapter 5. Write that down and read it later if you want. The armor of light is in verse 8. But I want to take a trip over to Ephesus in Ephesians chapter 6. So turn your pages to the right until you see Ephesians chapter 6. But hold on to that spot in Romans. Because we'll be coming back to that. I want to talk more in depth about this full armor of God that we're supposed to put on. Because this whole armor thing, I mean, that sounds pretty serious. I mean, who wears armor? Soldiers, right? Warriors, people in battle. And we 
are being told to put that on? I don't know about you, but I have to find out what this is, what this is about. Ephesians chapter 6. We're just going to read through it and I'll comment it. I'll comment on it as we go through. Ephesians chapter 6 will start in verse 10. Paul says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. There it is. Why? That you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. That's why. The devil. The devil's sole purpose in this world is to hinder our walk with the Lord. It's to distract us from the things of God, to tempt us. To sin, He wants to steal our joy, our hope, our peace. He wants to kill us. He wants to destroy us. He's the complete opposite of God. He hates us. He's our enemy. And that sounds even more serious than this whole armor thing. I mean, this thing wants to kill me? Where is he? Verse 12. For we do not wrestle or battle or fight against flesh and blood, being other humans, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Now, this just sounds weird. I mean, let's be real. Cosmic powers, spiritual forces. It sounds like something from Star Wars. But listen... It's true. It's true. The word of God says so. There is this unseen world, okay, with angels and demons that we can't see that are just warring over our souls. You know the picture in the cartoons with the good angel on one shoulder and the bad angel on the other shoulder and the good angels telling the guy to try to keep him on the right track but the bad angels telling him stuff to get him to go on the wrong track? That's real. That's, that's real life. So then what do we do? Verse 13. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, that day that could come to an end at any moment, but we still live in for the now, that day. And having done all to stand firm, stand therefore, having fastened on, here comes the armor, the belt of truth, meaning the truth of the gospel, sound doctrine, the word as a belt holding everything up close to you and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, not works-based righteousness, but the righteousness of Jesus imputed to believers, protecting your vital organs, your heart. 15, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. Now, the word readiness in Greek signifies a base or foundation, and it means to have a firm and solid knowledge of the gospel that produces peace from Jesus. And you stand on it. You don't move from it. And when you walk, it goes with you. It directs your steps. Verse 16, in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, meaning either the grace of faith or the object of faith, being in God himself, his power, his attributes, his perfection, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts, the lies, the accusations, the temptations of the evil one, the devil. 17, and take the helmet of salvation, meaning either salvation itself or Christ himself. The helmet of our Savior. For what? To protect our mind? To protect our thinking? To protect us from false doctrine and teaching? And lastly, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. For the Word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to divisions of soul and spirit of joints and marrow and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart, Hebrews 4.12. That's your sword. That's what you use to fight back the lies. 
the doubt, the fear, the trials, the temptations. 18, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. Prayer is powerful. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it's working. James 5, 16. So this sounds pretty serious, man. I mean, the Christian life isn't always puppy dogs and kitty cats. It's wolves. It's lions. It's a fight. It's a battle until Jesus takes us home. And Paul is saying that time when Jesus takes us home is close. So wake up. Arm up. Keep up. That's our third point. Keep up. Keep up. Meaning upright. Look at, go back to Romans. We're going to go back to Romans now. Romans 13, this is where we get it. We're on a roll now. Romans 13, 13 is where we get upright. Keep up. He says in verse 13, let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy. Hey, when I was in my 20s, which is not that long ago, just saying, dude, I don't like the way you looked at me when I said that. I used to work construction as a laborer, and my uncle was the project manager. So he was the big boss, and I was just a worker. And we worked hard. I mean, construction is hard work. We worked hard. But sometimes we would slack off a bit. You know, sometimes we would just stand around and talk. You know, just take a little break. Not work. But when my uncle stepped on the scene, everyone scrambled to look busy. I mean, carpenters were doing electrical work. I mean, everyone just scrambled to look busy because everyone wants to look busy for the big boss, you know? You can't get caught slacking off on the job site with the big boss. It's kind of like in school when your teacher leaves the room, right? You guys kind of relax a little bit. Uh, you talk with each other. Some of you might even shoot spitballs at kids. You know, you goof off. But when the teacher walks back in the room, what happens? Everyone quiets down, right? Everyone puts their noses in their books and they start writing stuff on paper that has nothing to do with anything. You just want to look busy. It, you have to make it look like you weren't slacking off. What Paul is saying here is let's act as if the big boss is on the job site all the time. Let's behave as if the teacher is in the room all the time. Let's live and walk properly as in the daytime all the time. Let's live these Christian lives out in every aspect all the time because at any moment, Jesus might show up. So let me ask you a question. What will you be doing when Jesus shows up? How will you be living when Jesus shows up? When Jesus shows up, are you going to be in prayer? Will you be in the word? Will you be discipling someone or evangelizing? Or will you be at a party getting drunk? Will you be smoking weed? Will you be engaged in premarital sex? Will you be watching pornography? How will Jesus find you when he shows up? It could happen whenever. How will he find you? Wake up. Arm up. Keep up. Paul closes out this chapter with verse, saying, verse 14 saying, Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provisions for the flesh to gratify its desires. 
This goes with our previous two points of arming up and keeping up. He says to put on the Lord Jesus after you wake up. Put on Jesus. Put on his righteousness, which is clean and white. We're taking off those dirty, muddy clothes, right? We're taking off the darkness, the sin, and we're putting on clean, bright, white clothes. We're putting on fine linen, which covers our sin, secures us from the wrath of God, de defends us in judgment. This is the gospel. But not just the gospel. When we put on Jesus, we are to act like Jesus in our actions, in our speech, in our character, we are to love like him, forgive like him, further the kingdom like him, and give no provision for the flesh, no opportunity for sin, no chance for earthly desires. The day when you meet God, the day when Jesus shows up, could happen at any moment, any time, any day, and it's close. It's closer than it was yesterday. So live each minute as if Christ were to show up the next. Every day. Always. Every day. Always. Amen. Awaken. I mean, this isn't really an easy. <laughs> My kids know that I don't, I can't write, but. This is easy to remember. This is a daily application. Always wake up, arm up, Keep up every day. Amen? That's good. That was really hard to come up with. And you, I feel like you guys are not appreciative. <laughs> Let's bow our heads and close our eyes as we close in prayer. God, thank you. That's really all we have. Thank you. We bring nothing to the table. We have nothing to offer. But you are good. You are so good. And we just want to live lives that are pleasing to you in the flesh. We understand that everything was done for us and we were forgiven and made righteous through Christ. But outwardly, in response to that, we want to live lives that portray your love, grace, and goodness. So help us to wake up. Those that are spiritually sleeping, Holy Spirit, come and quicken us. Wake us up. Remind us to arm up every day in the full armor of God, understanding that we are in a war. We are in a battle every day. Help us to keep up, upright, living lives like Christ every day, always in Jesus' name. Amen.